It's time to make one of those videos where I get water absolutely everywhere because my main water boiling device for cups of tea and coffee has failed and it's the switch that's failed in the top. What actually happened with this was that uh, when I went to boil a cup of water, I turned it on one day and it didn't turn on instantly. It's sort of, there's a wee pause then it made that sort of characteristic electrical sort of noise and then it lit up and I'm thinking oh and initially I wondered was it the base that was the problem because uh, this thing has a this dripping water everywhere uh, this thing has a contact in the base a, a round contact I'll just wipe that water off everything about focus because everything is up high and it's got the matching base and that basically means that when you fill this with water you can then just sit it on the base and it makes the electrical connection it's just very convenient for filling it's really common in the uh, Europe where we have uh, a beefy electrical supply that is capable of running three kilowatt kettles from a standard socket. But anyway, it turns out the switch inside here has failed and I went on eBay as one does and I found only one seller that sold the replacement switches. So this is a replacement switch and it uh, it's a, a rocker switch but with a bimetallic trigger so that when you turn it on and then it comes up to temperature and that biometallic strip bends let me just show you this it pushes it up until it goes tink and it clicks off cuts the power off let me show you how to change that and this is where i think i'm going to have to take the exposure off and turn that off and maybe try and lock the exposure and we'll see what happens so to change the switch in this you start by opening the uh, lid up for the fill port and there's two screws. There's one here and there's one here. This thing is just too big for my normal filming space. It's huge. Normally I uh, work with much uh, smaller items and as such the lighting is also pretty bad here. Let me try a more appropriate screwdriver. Is this screwdriver more appropriate? Yes it is. That's good. So just two screws initially. And there's a couple of things to watch out for. Springs. Springs are always the curse of repairing your own stuff like this. So let's get these screws out. And once they're out, this whole assembly at the top unclips and it swings forward. But it is clipped on at the front as well and it takes a bit of force to get it back on there. It's just clicked off. And uh, things worthy of note. Be careful of where you lay this down because it does have the hinge mechanism and the springs in it. Make sure those springs stay where they are in this picture. And uh, if you just let it down loose, that will just sort of drop out. It needs to be clamped in place when you actually put it back on. But you shall see this. It all goes back together. If it, if it doesn't work, you can try again. But here is the switch mechanism. Let's tame that down just a little tiny bit. Uh, so here's the switch mechanism. It's a lovely chrome top, which just physically unclips. But note that this little stem here hooks under that little plate. The point of that, I believe, is a little steam vent that lifts up and down. You can lift it out and uh, take a look at it. It's a little steam port that uh, allows the steam to vent out the unit to allow a faster reset. So here is the switch itself. And to change the switch, there's an LED down there. Um, I just thought I'd mention the LED just for no good reason at all. To change the switch, there is one screw located down here. A short screw. And once undone, the whole switch lifts up. And you drop the screw, which is stainless steel, into the thing. There are two connections either side. There's two wires on that one. One is for the LED and uh, this one here is uh, the power to the kettle, the other one is the power to the kettle element as well. And they're both on blade terminals that are quite hard to get off. But this one's a double blade terminal just because it does also power the LED at the same time to show that it's turned on. An LED, it looks just a little bit corroded underneath. It, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, this thing is very steamy and wet. It is a kettle after all. Let me just tweeze out that screw. Gotcha! So now... I'm going to bring in the new switch. Uh, I shall put a link to the listing for this, but it's interesting. Uh, one of the best bits of the listing is where it says in big letters, 
This is only the switch, nothing else. You will not get a £50 kettle. Please don't buy if you think this is a whole new kettle or have not read my description completely. I guess you said people who have complained when they've received their switch and said, but I wanted the whole kettle for the cost of a switch. The switch cost about £12, inclusive of shipping, which it's reasonable enough. It's very clever. I shall take the other one a bit to bits and show you how it works. It's a very neat design. I do wonder, are these made locally? Because uh, a local company is... Um, Strix. I'm just going to squeeze those uh, that terminal shut a little bit more. But the local company here is Strix, who make kettle components. I wonder if it's anything to do with them. Let's squeeze that one shut, and I'll see how the other one goes. So let's try that on. That's a much tighter fit. Let's try this one on. It's completely missed. That's that one. I do fancy changing these terminals too. I might do that. Uh, so this just seems to I don't think there's a lip here I think it just sits basically down into it like that And just held down by the screw Okay, let's get that down there And pop that little screw in It's very springy and bouncy as you can see in those wires The wires are quite stiff because they're probably Well, they're heat resistant for a start, I guess And also they're uh, fairly heavy-ish wires Because it is running a full... Three kilowatt kettle. I just whapped the microphone. The, so if you heard a loud pop noise. Okay, this is looking good so far. Let's get the chromium trim on. So here's the chromium trim, and it first hooks under that little thing, and then there's these little uh, bits here that just clip down over these uh, round stems here. So this goes under like that, clips down like that. That looks pretty good. Now comes the tricky bit. This front is kind of held on by the thing. That it's got a lip round the edge that that thing hooks behind, but it's also got a little latch down here, and to make it sit in properly, it requires a fair bit of effort here. I discovered that when I took it out. So let's see if we can get this. This is where uh, this lid would better up, because otherwise it gets in the way. That's where you have to actually sit it back into those little pivots. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can get this over. It's actually quite tricky to get on. This is the bit that the, of the video that's going to take the most time, probably, because that is a very awkward thing to sit in. There's probably a technique to this in the factory. There'll be somebody who just basically bangs these together. So I'm going to pull that. That looks like it. That looks promising. Is this going to sit down? Have I done it all in the wrong sequence? Nope, that looks pretty good, actually. Is that still going to work? Yes, it is still going to work. Okay. In go the screws. And then after this, I will show you how the switch mechanism works. It's quite neat. It's very, very simple, as most of these things are. The simpler they are, the better. Makes them easier to manufacture. And also, uh, it just makes the simplicity, makes them reliable. In this case, it's just, I would say they're a bit skimpy on the contact, but I suppose it's a, a balance of a... Uh, is that clipped in right? No, it wasn't clipped in right. It is now. It's a balance between the amount of force required to operate the switch. I keep hitting the phone because I'm so close to it, so you'll hear loud pop noises. Uh, is that going to clip down? That's going to spring up. Yep, that is fine. That should be it working. Now let's take a look at the switch. So I'm just going to take the exposure off, and there's going to be a sudden burst of light. Oh. And then let's take a look at this switch. So I shall lock the exposure. I shall try and get into a nice focal position, which is round about here. And the way this switch works, the rocking, this uh, little spring here is just a little loop, as I'll show you in a moment. And when you push it beyond the sort of midpoint, it suddenly clicks down because it, it's being most compressed in the, in the midpoint. And then it sort of, it springs out again. So it's basically rocking around that center point. The construction is so clever. This is where the, the spring will ping. This bit literally just slides forward and lifts off. And that spring then drops out and pings everywhere. This is the spring. It's so simple. 
and all that's happening is when this uh, clicks down, it pushes this, what's left of this contact. Uh, can you see how just wrecked that is? It's actually burnt the contact away completely. But there would have been a contact there originally that touched this main uh, sort of solid one, but this is the springy one. And it would have been uh, normally making contact with that until that pinged off and then it would push down to break the circuit. But in this instance, it's arced a bit and the weakest point has been that sort of edge of that contact that it's just fallen off into the kettle somewhere. Maybe I should have looked for that. But that's it. Just when the thing boils, uh, you can see that the plastic at the top, you can see all the steam running around it. And then the steam basically just pushes this in. That just pings that switch off and clicks it back off again. And there is secondary protection down in the base. So it's a very interesting system. Uh, I'm glad, let's focus down there. I'm glad to uh, get this going again uh, because initially I drew a blank. I didn't even find videos showing you how to change that switch, which is why I'm putting this one up. Um, and finding, I only found one of those switches online. Uh, this is the listing that, you know, it should be pretty obvious from it. The guy uh, is not selling an entire kettle. Uh, but it says genuine replacement switch, easy fit to Breville uh, VKJ142 black fast boil kettle. And the seller of this one was Insider 69 Transit. So if you've got one of these and it does that, if, particularly at when it first starts doing it, that you turn it on, it doesn't quite make contact until you bang the kettle or something. Then's a good time to buy one of those switches because it means it's probably going to pack in very soon. And that's how you change it. The hardest bit being this little bit of plastic here, getting it over the end there and making sure that clip goes in. It takes a bit of a, it takes a bit of messing around. Oh, that's a gross overexposure. All right. Okay. Uh, but there you go. That's how to fix that particular style of kettle.